local representative, Dr. Angelo Trötan, also a private institution here in Vienna, is right? Yes. And he will present on piezotrome crest split versus buccal uh, autologous only graphs, result of a randomized technical crime. The stage is yours. Respected chair, respected colleagues, today I will present to you the results of a randomized clinical study comparing the flapless piezotrome crest split, which my research group developed with the traditional procedure of the autologous bone block acquisitional bone grafting to widen the alveolar ridge for later dental implant insertion. We know from biology that after tooth loss and or tooth removal, in the first weeks, 12 to 16 weeks, we have to face the fact that we have a lateral atrophy and only later on, after years, it is followed by vertical atrophy. So it's imminent that we have to cope with the alveolar crest width very soon after tooth loss. The traditional method we know from the current literature that if we measure the width of the alveolar crest after the augmentation procedure, we'll have to face a loss of approximately 25% in the course of healing and the average net gain of alveolar crest width sums up to approximately four millimeters. To overcome certain problems in this complicated procedure, and you've heard the um, um, lecture by Professor Beans, we decided to develop on the basis of piezotron technology uh, instruments that allow us to split the alveolar crest bone lossless and flatless. The basic surgical procedure foresees that we have a mesodistal incision of the mucoperiosteum and only raise a small booklet flap to access the top of the alveolar crest, do some buccal relief osteotomies and then use the innate elasticity of both the maxillary and mandibular bone to distract without fractures of the baseline. Contrary to other similar procedures with rotary instruments, we don't need to raise the full thickness mucoperiosteal flap and we don't need a baseline osteotomy. Here you can see one of the clinical examples and the feature of piezotomes are that they allow a highly precise osteotomy and especially with the tips that we design, it's possible for the first time that we are able to cut bone lossless because with rotary instruments you always endure some uh, waste of bone. Here you see the course of the surgical procedure, booklet flap, initial vertical osteotomy, buccal oste relief osteotomies and then distraction by the clitzotone enabled tips. So our clinical study was based on the study group with 533 patients which were treated by the flatless plethiotone crest split which my group developed with a control group of 531 patients treated with a traditional bone block augmentation. The investigated comparative parameters were the overall surgical time, the pre and post surgical alveolar ridge width, the achieved alveolar ridge width gain after six months when the healing cycle was finished and the patient morbidity on day one, two, three, seven and two weeks after surgery based on the universal pain assessment skill. You can see another example in the maxilla, narrow alveolar crest, almost flapless, just a small booklet flap, crest split, the distraction and filling with bone graft here you can see on the other side, and this is the final result after the surgery. Here you can see for this example the initial press width was only 1.2 millimeters. I took the CBCT cans before we applied the bone graft material to visualize the distraction gap after the surgery, and only then we filled the bone graft material, and this is the result after six months. When we get to the results, 
not astonishingly, the only craft procedure, of course, took significantly longer because it's a more invasive procedure. When we speak about the alveolar bridge with gain with both methods, we see that we have a higher neck width gain with the piezotone surgical technique, but unfortunately it was not significant. Last but not least, regarding the pain assessment, we had significant lesser pain and swelling when we applied the piezotone surgical procedure. As a final summary and the clinical implications would be that flapless piezotone press split is a significant less traumatic alternative to buckle on the grafting and the flapless piezotone press split achieves better results regarding final horizontal alveolar press split but not significant and the flapless piezotone press split provides significant less surgery time consumption and post-surgical morbidity because it avoids long-term, also long-term com complications at bone block donor sites. Thank you. Good. Dr. Tritan, you were two minutes faster than you allocated time, so we have more time to discuss. It was a huge study, over a thousand patients involved. Maybe I am allowed to start. Uh, how did you randomize between these 500 patients and one and the other group? Um, the indication was set by a uh, clinician that initially was seeing the patients and then um, by a um, Excel table randomizer the patients were allocated either to the control group or to the test group. Okay. All three centers. And uh, maybe I can put a second question. How many wound dehiscences did you observe in the only graft group? And how many wound dehiscences in the split press group? Actually, with the flatless split to press split, in about 20% of the cases, uh, it was not possible because of the first to have the primary seal wound closure. Yes. But this, isn't, this fortunately didn't affect the outcome. Contrary on the uh, autologous bone block grafting, as we've seen also with uh, Professor Beats before, we had about 8% of the hisses, oh. but they were coped with some application of soft uh, of, of application of PRF membranes because we wanted to have uh, let's say almost no dropouts and it worked nicely with PRF. Thank you.